All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 73, and in today's episode, I will be explaining the function of a device that is depicted on a series of stones that are located in the northern court of the Step Pyramid Complex, which I first discovered back during my 2020 research expedition to Egypt. I haven't seen these stone carvings discussed or explained before, but this ancient machine would have been critical for multiple operations for the methane manufacturing that was occurring at the Step Pyramid Complex, and I think it is once again yet another perfect example of the practical yet absolutely genius mechanisms that were involved in this industrial scale chemical manufacturing that was occurring within the Egyptian pyramids. Also, to apologize for the brevity of episodes lately and for the changes in scenery that you will be seeing behind me over the next several weeks. Trust me, there is a very good reason for all of this, which will become abundantly apparent very, very soon. But for now, I will leave it at that, simply by saying that you do not want to miss what I have coming up here on the channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube, click that little notification button, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself some merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, now is a great time. My handle is at The Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about to get incredibly exciting here on this channel. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And first, the discovery of the stone blocks upon which the images of these devices are carved. So during my 2020 research expedition, we were exploring this area here in the northern court of the Step Pyramid Complex, where all of the rubble from the recent renovations and excavations of the site have been placed. While investigating the stones, I immediately noticed some carvings that caught my attention as being significantly different than anything I had seen before, which you can see here. And let me explain the configuration of this device so we can compare it to the conventional explanation. Let's start here with the blades. And you can see that these are directly across from each other. Here, 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 and here. Directly across from each other. Second, let's look at the central hub. And you will notice that there are two distinct pieces, one here around the outside and one here in the middle. And third, this beam leading from the central hub straight down and disappearing here where the stone was intentionally broken off. And notice how this beam is connected into the central hub. Now, keep this configuration in mind as we take a look at the next images. And what we have here are stars. So let's now take a look at this configuration and compare it to what we just saw, starting with the arms of the star, which are all equally spaced apart, and none of them are directly across from one another. Second, the central hub. These stars have just one circle in the middle, not a dual piece component like what we saw in the previous images. And third, there is no large beam coming out of and connected into the central hub. And the conventional explanation is that these devices depicted here are just stars. Nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. Pay no attention to the discarded stones that have been hidden in this ignored pile of rubble. But it is clear as day that these have a completely different configuration than these. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how the dynastic Egyptians depicted stars. And this is exactly what it looks like. A windmill with four rotating blades that you can see here. One, two, three, four. A central hub and the support beam that is connected into the mechanisms at ground level. So now, how would windmills be relevant to the ancient chemical manufacturing process that was occurring at the Step Pyramid Complex to generate methane gas? All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. I have brand new merch, 
hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts in multiple logos in a variety of colors, all now available at thelandofchem.com. And of course, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramid. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself some merch. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. All right, now let's go back to the very beginning. I have proposed that the Step Pyramid Complex of Saqqara was originally designed and intended to collect methane gas by introducing a slurry of water, agricultural scrap material, and cattle manure into the primary digestion chamber, which you can see here, through the northern inlet shaft, which you can see here. And in this diagram, on the western side of the complex, there is a huge storage silo that once housed the agricultural scrap material as previously explained in episode 28, link in the video description below. This plant material was then processed here in the northern complex, mixed with water and the cattle manure, and then poured into the digestion chamber through this northern inlet shaft. And I knew as soon as I first saw these depictions that I was looking at ancient grain mills powered by wind that were used to process, i.e. grind up, the agricultural material that was used in this methane generating slurry. And you can see here the inner workings of a grain mill. So just imagine this component here at ground level, which houses your millstone here that grinds up the plant material and the large beam that you just saw in those images would have just come out of the top here instead of attached on the side. So these windmills were used to process and grind the agricultural scrap into finer particles. Mechanically processing and grinding the material to produce finer particles exponentially increases the efficacy of the bacterial digestion process and leads to a much greater yield of methane. So of course, this ancient civilization that absolutely understood how to work smarter and not harder would have utilized machines like this to facilitate the processing stage instead of doing it manually. There is no, quote, I don't understand how it works, so it must be lost ancient high technology, end quote, here on this channel, ladies and gentlemen, but rather simple, practical machines that can accomplish miraculous tasks, exactly as I have proposed with the operation of the Egyptian pyramids. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. There is an even more practical and ubiquitously useful application for these windmills that is relevant to the function of all of these structures. And an ancient windmill pumping water into the reservoirs surrounding the pyramids. And yes, this is actually possible, and this application is still being used today. So you can see here that the subterranean pump is tapped in to an underground water source. This should be sounding very familiar as we have discussed how the channels leading in from the Nile River filled the underground aquifers and shaft networks below the pyramids. The pump is then powered by the rotating blades of the windmill, pumping the water up from underground and into the reservoir. So this is a perfect example and explanation of how ancient practical technology could have been utilized to facilitate these chemical manufacturing operations. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 73, The Ancient Windmills at Saqqara. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I will be discussing sulfur mining as related to the ancient industrial scale sulfuric acid manufacturing that was occurring in the Great Pyramid of Giza. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some major changes coming up very soon here on the land of Chem. And trust me, you do not want to miss what I have coming up. So if you haven't already, Please subscribe here on the channel, click that little notification button, and stay tuned. If you support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, now is the perfect time. My handle is at the land of to get incredibly exciting here on the channel. I think that is it for today's video, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.